Yo, what is up guys? It is Josh back with another video. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how you can actually create your own impacts for both DaVinci Resolve and Adobe After Effects. Before I get into the video though, I just want to say about 70% of you guys who watch my videos are actually not subscribed to the channel yet. So make sure to drop us up. It is 100% free for you guys to do and you can change your mind at a later date. Feel free to also drop a like and comment as it does mean a lot to me. Hope you guys do enjoy the links to the presets as well as the timestamps will be down below in the description. Hope you guys do enjoy and I'll see you guys in DaVinci Resolve. All right guys, so I'm in a brand new DaVinci Resolve project. I do have it set up where I have a clip and a song fully synced. If you guys want to check out how to do that, I just released a tutorial on how you can make a full highlights video um, and you can follow along with that. And then I also showed how you can do your five insane effects. All right, so all we got to do is just make sure we have an adjustment clip starting on the marker going to the very end of the clip. And we're just going to go inside of the fusion tab for this. And this is where all the magic happens for this. I did provide you guys with building blocks in the description that you guys can use to actually make these impacts. So I'm going to navigate to where I have them desktop, impact components, DaVinci, and right here we have these individual things. Um, break it down into four sections. We got Y shake, tilt shake, glint, and flicker. This is pretty much what I compose my impacts of. I'm going to go over it in just a second. But starting off, the most essential thing, which is the tilt shake, we can just drag it in like this. I'll actually drag all these other ones into just like this. And let me just quickly separate them just so they're all different. So this is actually going to be our tilt shake. All we got to do to connect it is just press shift on our keyboard, drag it into this line, and we can see instantly we have a tilt shake going on the clip itself and then we have a red frame at the very end so i don't know what the deal is with that so i'm just gonna kind of cut that out and uh i don't know why it's doing that but uh it's just bugging out sometimes twister does that it's all good who cares um it's just weird sometimes and all we got to do i'm just gonna go back into the fusion tab um right here we got our y shake which is this other shake we can see because the amplitude is on one we're just going to connect that in right there and we can see this one has a y shake which is this vertical kind of twitch that you can see when you actually add it lastly or sorry not lastly third on we have our flicker which adds a bit of a flicker if you guys can notice it you know flickers hence the name and then lastly we got our glint which adds a nice little brightness that goes along with the flicker just like that and it's super clean once you add it all together and i'm going to show you how you can adjust these values to get the look that you're desiring this is a full impact this is pretty much what i compose my impacts of something else you can do is look up bcc brightness contrast by pressing control space on your keyboard and looking it up dragging it in and then we're just going to bring down all these drop down menus right here i'm going to let it load just like this and then we're going to keyframe the brightness at like, I don't even know, like eight. And then go to the end, keyframe it at zero. And what that'll do is it'll go, it'll be like a nice little boost to the impact itself, which is super clean. And it will just add like a boosted brightness, if that makes sense. I don't know why this red frames right here, but it's all good. Um, if you're looking for something a bit more twitchy, what I would recommend is on your... Um, y shake for example you can up your frequency a bit to something like 30 maybe and that'll make something um glitchy or you can even change it to 50 which will make you have a super twitchy one like maybe it's like almost like an over edit kind of thing um it just depends on the look you're really going for you can tinker with those settings i'll quickly show you these are what the uh, y shake settings are right here in davinci and I wouldn't recommend messing around with too many settings just because if you do mess around with too much, it might end up making it look really weird. If you do want to kind of do the same thing with your Y or with your tilt shake, you can change the frequency up a bit. That way it does like this nice little wobble impact thing that can be found in, you know, various over edit impacts. This red frame is really making me mad. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Um, something I did notice is if you do where it's not z distance and it's just like rotation with a y shake that's super clean on over edit stuff um and just like this we can see that if we undo the keyframe here and just change this value to zero it looks super clean and i'm probably going to use that in my own montages to be honest these settings are super super nice um and then lastly the y shake obviously we've done that 
And then lastly, we got to cover the glint and the flicker. So if you want the flicker to be a bit more intense, something I'd recommend is something like 0.4 at the very beginning. And that's a lot more noticeable. I have uh, 0.24 as default. And if I'm doing something like crazy, I do 0.74 and then I go like 10 frames after and I turn it down to like the default value, like 0.25. We can see we have that crazy flicker at the beginning and then it tunes down, which makes it look super clean. And then the glint, what you can do, you can adjust this individually, change the brightness if you want to have it. Like I don't even know, like super bright, change the threshold and just have it. So I don't even know why you would want that, but I mean, you can just mess with things uh, just to see what actually looks best. So for example, you could do something like that, which does end up looking super, super cool. Like we can see just the kind of the combination of the glint with the siphon on the kill just kind of adds a whole lot to the montage itself, which is super clean. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much how you make your own impacts. If you want to, you can just base your settings of your impacts off these presets. Go check them out in the description. Um, you will need BCC and Sapphire plugins for this. So also go look up videos for that. I can't post it because it is against YouTube Terms of Service. And um, let's just say I pay for my plugins, which I definitely do for legal reasons. Um, I hope you guys enjoy though. I'm going to be moving on to After Effects and I will see you guys over there. All right, guys. So I am in After Effects now. I have the layout just where I have, you know, a clip. And let me quickly delete this stuff over here so it's not confusing for you guys. But I got a clip and then I got it lined up with the song. And then we have Velocity on it. Um, I do have a tutorial if you guys want to check that out that you guys can follow along with. Um, but yeah, so pretty much for this, what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how you can actually make the best impacts from the building blocks I've provided in the Google Drive. All you got to do is just make an adjustment layer that uh, spans the duration of the impact on the kill and then goes to the very end. And then we're going to come back here, go one frame before and just do that right there and expand it just like this. Uh, from there, what we're going to do, we're going to put our playback on the marker right here. We're going to go to apply animation presets and then we're just going to find this folder where we have our own things. So right here, we have four different components for After Effects um, that I use for most of my impacts. So for example, we're going to start off with the essential tilt shake. We're just going to line up the second keyframe with this right here um the scaling is really weird on this so what i'm going to do is i'm going to change the uh project settings just to kind of fit this just like that just like that okay perfect and let me make sure that we can actually see the entire thing perfect all right so we can see the tilt shake is working effectively um that's exactly what we want and uh, the cool thing about this if you are looking for something that is you know a bit more twitchy you can do something like change the frequency to three even and what you can do from here is we can see it's a bit too much if it lasts the entire duration but what we can do we can see that the value is zero right here the value is uh, 0.8 for the amplitude so we can come around here and change the amplitude to i don't even know like maybe 0.4 just like that even that's kind of a bad shake so i'm going to change this uh frequency to like 2.3 so right here we can see that it is looking a lot better since we've changed the frequency to 2.3 um and just like that you know it's looking twitchier than the original i'll quickly show you what it was looking like before if we just had the frequency on one it's kind of just like a weird like tilt shake kind of thing i don't even know but this makes it look a lot better especially when we pair it with the next essential component which is actually going to be our y shake um all we're gonna do is we're just going to line up this with our um second point right here and we can see that this adds a lot more to the kill where it does kind of like a wiggle and then it has like a zoom out what i'm going to do is i feel that this is just going to look a lot better if we get rid of that zoom out and just have it on the y shake so what i'm going to do is i'm going to change the frequency of this y shake to 15 just to make it a lot more twitchy and 
I'm going to expand the duration a tiny away. bit to actually line up with this one right here. That, that way that twitchiness kind of lines up with each other. We can see it like bounces for a bit. Um, and even if we want to, we can just expand this all the way. And we see this is zero. So we can change the value of this to like, I don't know, like 0.1. And that is already looking super clean. Um, so then we're going to add our next component, which is going to be the flicker. We're going to adjust the keyframes just like this. And something I'd recommend is sticking with like the default value that I have, which is like a 0.38. But what I'm actually going to use is I'm going to use something more like a 0.45 because I feel like that's going to be more of like an intense kind of flicker for this intense impact we've created with this twitchy shake. What I do sometimes is I change the value at the very beginning to like something like 0.74, which you can see is like a crazy amount of flicker. But then I'll come over here to like this midpoint and I'll change this down to something mediocre like a 0.3, for example. So we have that crazy flicker at the beginning and then it tones down and does a slow ease into that zero at the very end. That's that component. You can adjust that by changing the frequency, amplitude, all that stuff. And then the last one is actually going to be our lens blur, which I add to impacts just like this. And uh, that doesn't really need to be modified. That is just, I'll quickly show you the settings for that. It is just a 600 gamma with a sharper or yeah, sharper quality fast lens blur and then this one is uh it's just keyframed at nine if you want to do something where it's like 12 or something that does increase it a bit more hey, hey, and it just does kind of add a nice little kind of vibe to it i don't even know how to explain it but just having hey, lens blur on your impacts just adds a I don't know it's it's kind of just a it sets the mood for your impacts but just like that as you guys can see we were messing around with different settings so you can adjust these settings depending on what kind of feel you're going for in your montages i do definitely recommend these four main components the tilt shake the y shake the fast lens blur as well as a flicker because it does really just tie everything together in terms of the simplistic um, impacts all that stuff for your highlights videos i hope you guys did enjoy the video though i will see you guys in a future upload on the channel feel free to leave me some comments down below as to what you want to see over the next couple of weeks and uh yeah I'll see you guys later peace out